welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Kevin Connor. He's the Chief Product Officer at Decision Lens. Kevin, good to have you with us. Thanks, Tom. Nice to be with you. And let's talk about that big, ugly hairball of a process of five years, the entire short range, long range planning process that the Defense Department and its various components are continuously in. This is something they never get out of and because uh, it's, it's five years. And right. so they've got short term, long term. What does that look like to you and to the outside? Yeah, so uh, what, what we've noticed, I think one of the best analogies you can make to the short range, long range dimension of it is to think of the Mike Tyson quote about, uh, you know, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth, right? And it's, and it's kind of the long-term planning aspect of it is really an ability to vision out what often includes a component of transformation, which in those kind of timeframes is happening even more and more rapidly due to technology development. And really being able to manage that in the short term with the puts and takes of urgent matters that arise or changing conditions. So it's very hard for people. It used to be very easy to sort of sit down and lock and load a long-term plan and execute against it. But the modern world as it is, has really brought us into a, a phase where that long-term plan is an ever-evolving series of short iterative plans. And so what we've tried to do is build a solution that helps people to really get into that, to understand that there's a reconciliation of the longer term view and vision with the shorter term decisions required to stay on track and adapt to changing conditions. Yes, it seems like almost across the board, DOD leaders talk about the tremendous amount of R&D that they're doing. And in fact, if you look at the president's budget request for 2023, it includes a big uptick in research and development spending. But then they also express the need to develop and deploy, really deploy these technologies quickly. And that's where they run into trouble because often something could be ready and there is demand on the part of a DOD component for whatever it is that was developed. But this year, there's no money for it because it's part of a five-year POM. That's right. Yeah. And so, so these challenges are, are really burdening organizations with the ability to have that longer longer range of view of where they're trying to go. And I mean, you really have this challenge of having to reconcile, you know, existing assets that you have to maintain and have to be deployable in the interim while you're developing new technologies and new assets to deploy. And how do you transition and train and do all the things that are necessary to move that in concert? It's really a difficult puzzle to solve. It's a Rubik's cube times 10, right? And, and what a, what's really needed is some way to be able to not have that be an emergency data call that happens once a year where everybody gets in a room and they collect a bunch of spreadsheets and they confound some sort of budget and they put it together and look at it and go, what does it really mean? We don't know. There's a lot of disparate pieces. Some of the data is not standardized. Some of the sources are not um, consistent and trying to piece that together is, is really a challenge. So when they try to bring the R&D money in to have a, the most efficient impact and be most effective, at moving the needles necessary, it really requires this ability to, to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. How do you manage the ongoing current state of affairs with the emerging directions that you need to move in? And that, that really takes a steady hand on the wheel and a, a tremendous amount of visibility into the data that just typically has not been available in the past, like having to drill down into spreadsheets to find these numbers of what's funded and what's not funded and how they relate to each other and what's dependent on what for success and the current state of play and all of that, you know, that that is a real fire drill in the old spreadsheet world of uh, data management. So, And how does the color of money question uh, affect all of this? Because very often total dollars don't mean anything because they might be a variety of different colors of money, which means they're restricted in how you can interplay with them. That's right. And so, uh, you know, what we've seen, again, this is why, you know, the way we've tried to construct our frameworks and our ability to bring a solution to the DOD space is to really help people be able to plan at those higher levels and at those high levels, be able to see on a total dollar basis, what are the kinds of things that we should be doing? But then that reconciliation of how you actually allocate the money across time and across those pools of money and line up the starts and stops of all the different initiatives so that they actually have the impact desired at the desired time. Is, is where the puzzle building really comes in. So what our solution really tries to do, it's almost like if you think about the, uh, you know, increasingly zooming in on the coastline on a map, right? Uh, the picture is never really complete, right? You have the highest level view of it, 
you can get a little bit closer and start to flow the money across time by colors of money. But ultimately you have to lay out that plan for spending that money by year. And in each year that you're doing that, be able to have visibility into, are these projects getting started on time? Are they achieving their objectives and milestones? Are they really you know, allocating and using the money as desired? Or they, do they have large spend overruns? And all of that really creates a changing environment in the very short run that requires reallocation of that money, right? So money doesn't get spent, something doesn't start on time. What do we do with that accrual of money now to continue the mission, right? So you really have to go from this highest level visibility of what does this all look like on a big picture basis to how do you execute that down within the year? And that increasing level of granularity requires an increased level of transparency of the data and a better ability to connect those different planning phases of high level down to actual allocation and spend of the money. And you mentioned the drill of the spreadsheets and the requirements yeah. to drill down into those and dig down into those. Is it, it's bad enough if data is only in spreadsheets, but is it only in spreadsheets? Do they have other sources? PowerPoints, often a lot of doctrinal do. information is not in a spreadsheet format. That's right. A lot of times what we'll see is proposals come in in presentations. A lot of reporting gets done in presentations. You know, a lot of tables will get cut and clipped from Excel into a PowerPoint so that the data becomes very sort of, you know, goes through this generations of how it moves through communication where it's not in a centralized repository where people are accessing it necessarily. There are systems. Um, those systems for obvious security reasons can be difficult to harvest data from as a supplier like us, a software supplier. Sometimes get, being able to touch those systems is difficult. So there's human error factors where that data comes out and it has to be uh, validated and then put into a system. And where possible, we like to integrate because that makes it very easy to get the true source data into the system. But normalizing and standardizing that data is such a key part to really being able to do this effectively. Because what happens is we've seen organizations in the past that will have presentations come in in all different formats for the requirements. It'll come in in a PowerPoint, or it'll come in in a spreadsheet, or it'll come in in a Word document. It'll come in in a variety of forms. And then somebody is really playing the role of, you know, how do we normalize all of this, make sense of it, be able to see what it says and use it to inform decisions. And that can be incredibly challenging as you can imagine. So what we've tried to do is create an ability to get that into somewhat of a standardized format so people have some visibility into it then the implication is that the tool that you offer has the ability to look at unstructured information and somehow translate it and normalize it as data available to planners. Right. And, and what we've tried to do with that, which is it's a very interesting problem, right? Because part of what happens is that um, the data seems unwieldy and unstructured, but the problem in essence really isn't. You know, the, the problem actually is very structured. And it's a problem that we all face. You can make the analogy to your own personal investment portfolio of a 401k plan or something, right? You're, you're trying to get as much value as you can for the money spent. You're trying to get the best cost benefit ratio there. You're trying to do that at some managed and reasonable risk profile. And you're trying to diversify across different categories of spend or different asset classes. And so the problem structure is very common. The, the problem is that it's not often thought of in that way. So what we've tried to do and our solution is, is bring in this framework that allows you to have total customization in the variables that you're using because from agency to agency or division to division, you may be looking at the problem slightly differently, but they all fall into those categories, right? So you have your value uh, variables, you have your cost fields and your, your cost um, pools and colors of money. You have some sort of risk measures or probability of successes or likelihood of completion or value realization. And then you have the categories of investment type. And as long as we can map that seemingly unstructured data to that structure, then we can give you a very common way of looking at it with purpose-built analytics that understand the name of the game, drive the value up, keep the cost online, manage the risk profile and diversify across the asset classes. And what about the issue of data being the, that you're using being the trusted or the incontrovertible source of truth? Because you could have the same spreadsheet in five different locations and they're not all synchronized. That's and right. How do you attack the issue of making sure that the data that you do finally use and normalize and analyze is the correct data? That's right. 
So the, the challenge there has been, you know, spreadsheet version control on a laptop is again, right, a very, a very difficult thing. It's gotten better as you get into SharePoint and SharePoint keeps maybe a current version of the file and you can uh, version control that file. You can see the last date it was updated or modified. But that's a little bit different than what we're trying to do because we're trying to take data in a way that is very friendly with Excel. In fact, our interface and our solution looks a lot like that. It's very tabular. Um, it's familiar for users not to have to make a big, you know, conversion in UI behavior to be able to, you know, sort of adopt our solution, um, which is which is helpful for them. But that ability to bring that data into that purpose-built framework so that you can apply the analytics necessary to inform the decision making that's necessary. Um, then we run an audit log in our solution that really helps with that. So anytime a user updates a number, it registers in the audit log who it was changed by and when it was changed. And there's a sort of a running tally list of being able to keep the latest source of truth on that data, you know, available to everybody to see and for everybody to know and to be able to have traceability for. So, you know, we've tried to get it out of, um, you know, what's the version of the spreadsheet and to what's the latest version of the number. And defense planners sometimes say that they don't want to be overloaded with data, that they don't need all of the data that's in the defense department to make a decision about this platform or that software development or that troop level requirement that might be needed in an out year or so. And so how do you attack or what's the best way to attack the, the relevance so that only the relevant data is brought in for a particular analytical need and you don't end up overwhelming your system with, with just too much data. Yeah, that's an outstanding question and a great insight. Uh, in fact, my experience has been, and you know, I, I did the year, uh, did the sort of the, did, you, did the job as a planner for, you know, a number of years previously, right? So before I was a Decision Lens customer at one time before I came to be the chief product officer here, uh, back when the solution was very fledgling and in its earliest stages, I was a classic early adopter who kind of glued it together with some scotch tape and rubber bands and some chewing gum to try to get it to be able to work with some other systems. And while I was doing that, I learned a really important lesson about what happens. And that is that there's a tendency to really over elaborate the project, the problem, right? And if you think about that, let's just take a, take a simple example. Say you have 50 projects you're evaluating and you decide that you wanna have 50 criteria that you evaluate them by. And by chance, every one of your 50 projects does really, really well on one of those 50 criteria. Well, you've really established nothing. You know, now you have a list of 50 things that all do great on one thing. And you want to make the argument that they're all fantastic because they do good on that one thing. Well, it, it really is an argument for parsing down the data to sort of the handful rule. It's probably a pretty good way to think of it, right? There's probably a few really important variables that move the needle. And that tendency to over elaborate really is an insecurity and in planning that we'll miss something or if we don't capture everything, we won't be able to make a good decision. And while a lot of that data provides either, you know, context or it's sort of a metadata and important to help inform people if they're thinking, that thinking probably relates to a few important variables, you know. And so the more that we can help them sort of cattle shoot into a framework that limits the number of variables that are really, you know, there's a, that old term key performance indicator. The word key is because they're key. There's a, there's a few that really make a difference and many that don't. Right. And so there's this insecurity and a tendency to really, we've got to capture everything. We got to get it all in the system. And we allow for that. We allow you to bring it in. We allow you to access it on a metadata basis. But um, when it comes to the decisioning, we really like to try to guide them to pare it down a bit so that they can really have those, those ones that really make the difference be the deciding factors. All right. On that note, we're going to take a short break. My guest today is Kevin Connor. He's the chief product officer at Decision Lens. I'm Tom Temin on this special bulletin review, Modernizing Federal Government Planning, sponsored by Decision Lens here on Federal News Network. <laughs> 